Assalamu alaikum everyone. So lecture number 29 and we will be talking about uh, NS2 architecture and NS2 is a tool f that is used for simulating the networks. So these are the bullets uh, which we will be going through one by one. First of all the goals which we want to target by using NS2. Then the languages that are being supported and used uh, for NS2 and then NS2 uh, is offering different models so we'll be talking about those models and there are a uh, lot large number of components that are being uh, available in NS2 uh, so when we talk about the simulation or uh, the emulation of uh, a network right so most of the time the uh, objectives are related to the research community though uh, there are a lot of other uh, usages of this uh, network simulator tool but we will be uh, targeting the research community so we'll be talking about the underlying uh, work that is being uh, done by the research community and then the platform uh, actually NS2 was developed for Linux or Unix but later on, uh, it is being supported on other platforms, for example, Windows and Mac OS X. And uh, we will be talking about the directory structure of the NS NS2 uh, while uh, targeting the architecture and the class hierarchy as it is developed by using C and C++. So we'll be talking about the class hierarchy and then there are a lot of different applications that are being supported by NS2 so we'll be talking about those different applications for example FTP that is an application and then the agents that are being used when we have to simulate uh, an infrastructure a net network or topology so uh, we can also visualize uh, the simulation graphically so we will be talking about the tool that is used in order to visualize the simulation. Then we will be talking about different components, nodes, links and packets. And the routing that is supported by uh, NS2. And finally we will be talking about the wireless node because wireless node is uh, a bit different as opposed to the fixed network node. So let's start. So actually NS2 was developed by Berkeley and it is uh, maintained by USC. So it is very popular tool among the scientific community because most of the network research is actually based on simulations. So uh, it is very difficult to first uh, build the network and then test it uh, or maybe we have to generate uh, intensive synthetic traffic that is uh, not possible and not feasible in most of the cases so that's why uh, people mm, are relying on simulation and emulation most of the time so that's why this tool is very popular among scientific community among research community because we can test different protocols we can test different topologies we can test different <coughs> routing algorithms and so and so forth though there are some other simulation tools that are available uh, for example Qualnet and it is uh, based on Glo Glomosim uh, that is designed focusing on wireless networks and we have Opnet that is a commercial tool and Omnet plus plus there are a lot of other tools so here are the goals so as mentioned that uh, the industrial community is also using this tool but most of the time this, to, this tool is uh, being used extended maintained by the research community and academia right uh, so of course they have their uh, goals their targets right so for example uh, some of the groups they are very uh, much involved in protocol design so uh, it, this tool can help them, help them in order to evaluate the protocol or 
maybe there are different metrics, different parameters that are involved within the protocol. So as uh, we t talked about the communication, so in communication, our main objective is to transmit bits and bytes from one point to another point. So it's, it's not an easy task. So what we did, we divided this complicated task of trans transmitting of transmission of bits and bytes from one point to another point into smaller subtasks. And we have allocated those smaller subtasks uh, onto different layers. So we have adopted layered approach. So as those tasks are being performed at different layers, so of course there should be different protocols, a uh, bunch of rules in order to perform those ta tasks. For example, we can have a lot of different protocols on the network layer. Maybe we have uh, protocols for data link layer and protocols for transport layer and so and so forth. So if somebody is, uh, has expertise at a particular layer, for example, network layer, so he should be focusing on that particular layer and in order to design and develop a protocol, there should be some sort of simulation or evaluation or performance analysis. So this can be done by using NS2. Then, of course, uh, traffic studies, the behavior of the traffic. For example, uh, if we talk about uh, the cellular communication nowadays, so the carriers, they are actually interested in the call arrival rate. So if I'm uh, a router uh, manufacturer, or maybe uh, I'm interested uh, to evaluate or analyze the router or a particular port uh, within the router, so maybe I'm interested in the packet arrival rate, right? And uh, there can be different uh, traffic engineering requirements or maybe traffic policing or maybe traffic forwarding or switching and so and so forth. So we can study traffic also because this is an important uh, element of the network. So of course, uh, whenever we have to choose a protocol, so we need comparison. We, we want to analyze, right? So we can also use NS2 in order to compare different protocols. And then, of course, topology for a certain network is very, very important. So we can also uh, evaluate a particular topology, particular architecture, particular infrastructure when uh, we have to design a network Right? So we can take the example that we have the core network that is based on fiber optics. And then uh, over the uh, core network, we have an overlay network that is actually based on copper. And then above all, we have a wireless network. Right? So this is a, a kind of architecture. So we want to evaluate that architecture. So every media has its own delay, has its own digital packet loss. And there are a lot of other metrics that are involved. So we want to evaluate those different uh, characteristics, right? So overall, if you want to evaluate an architecture, so we can do that by using NS2. So of course, there are different groups that are working uh, by focusing on particular areas. For example, one group, uh, they maybe have expertise in routing. Another group, they have expertise at data link layer. So uh, another group, they have expertise at the physical layer. So they can collaborate by, by if, if um, <coughs> they are using NS2, so they can collaborate. And then uh, as uh, NS2 is an open source, so it's freely avail available. And uh, moreover, you can also add your own stuff uh, into the NS2, right? So if you want a protocol uh, right, which have certain uh, characteristics, so you can do that. If you want to add some router that is routing on the basis of your own algorithm, so you can do that. So you can add your own stuff. Okay. And last but not the least, uh, the people that are involved in embedded systems, they are also using uh, NS2. Uh, they actually, uh, nowadays, uh, people are 
designing or manufacturing embedded system by using network on chip. So on the network on chip, when we talk about the network on chip, they need to find algorithms that are power efficient. There are a lot of different other problems, delay, jitter, and packet loss, because they are uh, they have to be very, very sensitive, very, very keen when they are going to place a lot of processors, memories, and other components all together onto a single chip. So uh, we can evaluate different topologies, for example, star, bus, torus, and butterfly. So people are using uh, NS2 for embedded systems also, and one of the examples is network on chip. You can evaluate different topologies, as I've mentioned. And now come to the languages that uh, are being supported by NS2. OTCL, right, short for MIT object, TCL, right? So it's a, an extension to TCLTK for object-oriented programming, right? It is uh, basically used to build the network structure and topology, right? So you can just build the surface of your simulation by using OTCL, right? And the plus or the advantage of uh, this language is it is very easy to configure, right? Your network parameters. So if I, I, I build uh, an infrastructure, I build, for example, a topology, and I want to change the parameters. So if I have to develop it by using C++, so it will be a mess, right? So you have to code uh, from the scratch if you want to change certain parameters. But with this object TCL, you can configure your network parameters very easily, right? Okay. Then C++, uh, its kernel, or you can say its main core is NS2 main core, or its engine is written in C++, right? So, uh, for example, packet flow view, right? The process, uh, the process is run on a single node, right? Because when we talk about a node, so there can be a lot of different processes that has to be run on a single node, right? So it's very difficult to change, to modify on the runtime, right? So that's why we have not used uh, C++ when we have to build this surface of the simulation, for example, topo topology design and development, right? So you can see that here we are, have used OTCL, but uh, for the core, for the engine where we need uh, to run processes, we need uh, to <coughs> have fast computational computation, so or lower level uh, processes processing so in that case we have preferred C++ so here uh, is the justification that why we are using two languages that are the main languages for NS2 so the detailed simulation of the protocol we need runtime speed speed right and if we want to change the parameters uh, again and again right so we want uh, an easy configuration, right? So that's why we uh, preferred uh, a scripting language, language, and C++ is actually faster, right, to run, but slower to code. You cannot change the code effectively and efficiently, right? But it runs faster, of course, uh, because uh, it's uh, of its uh, design and compilation. But on the other side is e easy to code, but it runs slow slowly, right? So here are the models that are being supported by NS2. We can have different traffic models. For example, we can uh, generate traffic, uh, exponential traffic, uh, traffic that is based on uh, some other distributions, Pareto, and so and so forth. And then we can also have a lot of different applications, application models, web, FTP, telnet, constant bitrate, real audio transport protocols, right? And then uh, we also have different protocols, uh, TCP, UDP, right? And then we can also uh, apply, we can also model different routing, 
and queuing mechanisms. And those models are supported for wired and wireless network, right? So uh, here are some of the model protocols, wired networking, routing, right? And for transportation, we have TCP, UDP. Uh, we have traffic sources that generate traffic accordingly. For example, for web, FTP, telnet, and then we have different queuing mechanisms, disciplines, drop tail, red, and uh, quality of service, end serve and def serve, where the uh, traffic is actually filtered on the basis of priorities, right? And um, it also have support for ad hoc routing and mobile IP, and we can also simulate sensor networks. So here are some of the main components of NS2, uh, NS2 Network Simulator 2 itself. And then we have the NAM Network Animator. It is the tool that is used to visualize uh, the trace, right? And then we have pre-processing traffic and topology generator. We can generate traffic and we can also generate topology and then after the uh, processing, pre-processing, we need to uh, evaluate, we need to perform analysis. So in order to do that, we have simple stress analysis. Uh, uh, it is being done by AWK, uh, Abstract Window Toolkit, and then Perl, and mostly in TCL. So here are some of the research areas that are being uh, targeted, but we can explore more areas. InServe, and DevServe, right? So InServe, uh, that is actually, uh, th these are the quality of service classification mechanisms that are being used uh, for traffic routing and forwarding. And then we have multicast routing, reliable multicast transport, TCP congestion control, and if we talk about the application, web caching, multimedia, wireless and mobile communication, sensor networks, network control chip. These are the areas. Uh, we can have a lot of other areas. For example, topology comparison. So we can compare different topology. If we talk about the network on chip, and if we talk about the sensor networks, so you can have uh, a core network that is wired, and uh, we have uh, an overlay network over this uh, overlay network onto this core network by using sensor networks, and then we can also evaluate uh, wireless protocols. By, uh, we can also evaluate the routing algorithms that are power efficient, because when we talk about the wireless communication, we have to uh, focus the power deficiency and power uh, issues. And then we can also talk about the mobility issues. We can also use NS2 in order to simulate, emulate certain mobility issues, right? So these are the, so here is the platforms that are being supported by NS2. So actually, the NS2 was developed uh, natively for Linux and Unix, right? But af after that, uh, it is <coughs> supported by some other platforms, for example, Windows, we can use Segwin in, uh, uh, during one of our lectures, last lectures, we talked about how we can use uh, NS2 on Windows by using Segwin. And uh, we, it is also available uh, nowadays for Mac OS X, right? So there are uh, different versions that are available for Mac OS X, different versions. So Windows, uh, we can have NS2 on Windows 7, maybe Windows 8, and so on and so forth. And then we can also uh, use NS2 on Solaris platform. OK, so here is the directory structure of NS2, right? So you can see we have different directories, right? And you can also see uh, TCL, TK, o OTCL, TCL, and this is NS2, right? And this is the NAM, Network Animator, and NS2, it here we have the C++ code, and here we have the TCL code, 
right? And in TCL, we have examples in order to validate, validate our installation or in order to validate certain tests. These are directory tests, and here is the uh, library, right? TCL code, core code. So here you can see uh, we talk about the uh, directory structure. So here is the directory structure, and here is the uh, scenario OTCL script, right? That is used to uh, generate network topology, and uh, then we have the traffic scenario. And here we have the OTCL interpreter C++ library and you can see that simulation results are being displayed by using NAM or we can also use uh, XGraph or some other tracing uh, software. So here is the simulation result, right? Okay, so here are the components of NS2. NS2, uh, this is the version, and for TCL again, we have version and TK, TCL, CL, NAM, right? And we have also uh, documentation available, right? Tutorials available and different models that are being implemented by using C++. And then uh, we have examples, test cases, and this is the core code itself specify simulations generate traces uh, depends on TCL TK or TCL right and then we have NAM uh, animate traces from simulation GUI for constructing simple simulations and of course uh, we have uh, pre-processing traffic generation topology generation and after pre-processing we have post-processing analysis trace Right by using S graph or maybe NAM. Okay, so here is the class hierarchy: TCL object, right? NS object, connector, classifier, and then we have queue, delay, right? Agent, trace, add our classifier, and then multicast classifier, red, right? So these are queues, and these are the agents. TCP agent and then we have NQ, DQ, DROP, Reno and SAC. These are different versions of TCP that is a transmission control protocol. So here is the mechanism uh, or methodology to use NS2. First of all you have to define your problem. You can take a piece of paper, you can draw your topology uh, and then you can attach different nodes and and then uh, first first of all your problem should be defined in a very good way and then you need to uh, model right so what model is you you are going to use in order to simulate your problem then uh, extend simulator right so here uh, if you need to add something so you can extend you can add your own code right and then uh, you can also uh, after that you have to execute your code for example you have generated topology by using some TCL and you have called the different functions from the uh, main C++ library and of course you have to launch that simulation and then uh, this is uh, here you can have pre-processing and here the post-processing so after the results are being gathered you can display those results or maybe you uh, you can use NAM or maybe XGraph so create simulation describe network of course uh, protocol source sync right so whenever we talk about the communication so we yet need to uh, establish or design or develop a network so of course uh, for communication you need protocols right so if you want to communicate data from one computer to another computer from one wireless node to another wireless node or maybe one sensor node to another sensor node so you need to establish the topology so how they are going to be connected and then 
Of course, the communication, that is a complex task, so you need, uh, you, you have to follow certain rules. And those rules are actually defining different protocols. So first, uh, network design, then protocols, and then sources that are generate that will that will be generating traffic and then sinks so where the traffic has to be sync right and interface via OTCL which controls C++ and this is the uh, execution of the simulation event list packet list executes next event packet repeats until done right Instantly, instantly in virtual time but could take arbitrarily long real time single thread of control no locking race etc and then here we have the post processing results we can use skips to process text output for example I have different parameters so now uh, if I'm interested in packet inter arrival time so I will be expecting uh, that parameter by using uh, some script or maybe some language right so there is no standard library available to do that so you have to do at your own so here uh, we have shown separate object model right so you can see we have objects in OTCL and we have objects in C++ shared class hierarchy control uh, is done or handled by OTCL and data is manipulated by C++ right so you can see here we have the control on this part and here we have the data actual data that is flowing right provides glue library right so in order to glue the control and data of course uh, when we talk about the simulation of a network so we need a control in order to uh, evaluate or uh, in order to generate particular behavior and then there is a, a communication that uh, is being done between, between different nodes so of, key, of course you need data so uh, they has to be bundled together or glued together so TCL CL provides that uh, functionality right uh, it is actually a glue library and that is used to easily share functions variables right all classes are mirrored so here OTCL into C++ command right and then TCL dot result and then here we have TCL dot evaluation right? C++ into OTCL right okay so this is the skip mentioning mentioning the simulation right so you can see uh, an object is initiated over here instantiated over here and there is uh, a corresponding object that is initiated over here right so you can see the communication so here you can uh, watch and you can visualize the duality right so this is C++ these are objects that that are being coded in pure C++ by using object oriented programming and here we have pure OTCL objects and you can see the relationship and here we have the data and here we have the control right so as mentioned OTCL control so uh, of course uh, C++ for data prepacket processing the core of NS fast to run detailed uh, complete control right for control simulation description periodic or triggered action so if uh, I have to launch a packet so uh, there will be a trigger right so periodic or triggered action then manipulating existing C++ objects so of course we need to control C++ objects so faster to write and change okay so here is the linkage between C++ and OTCL TCL class uh, create and initialize TCL objects and then TCL C++ methods to access TCL interpreter 
Okay, so here we have basic hierarchy in NS for split objects. Uh, mirror in both C++ and OTCL, TCP. So here we are actually uh, initializing and or creating a new agent that is TCP. And this is the window size. Okay, so here you can see that the TCL object, agent, agent TCP, and here C++ class hierarchy, TCL object, agent, TCP agent. So actually, shadowing uh, on the other side, right? So C++, and here we have the mirroring, right? And you can see OTCL, C++, agent, right? And eco agent and agent eco over here. So this is the class right so here we have some basic uh, TCL so you can see uh, how we have to declare the parameters and these are the functions and ex um, expressions so variable declaration over here and here we have functions and expressions right and here is the control flow right so you control structure you can see if while and for and these are the procedures for basic TCL and here we are handling files filing right so uh, we have all the ingredients of a language variables functions expressions and these are the control structures if for while and these are the procedures and here we have filing in order to read and write data so here's the class person constructor right and this is the method right for and then we have the subclass so it, this is also a sort of object oriented methodology so here uh, we have mentioned c++ and otcl linkages objects in simulator objects are shared between otcl and c++ by default so you can see here we evaluate things in interpreter TCL dot evaluate right and here we have uh, the result that is being returned to the interpreter right and here access results for interpreter right so you can see TCL dot result and here you can see uh, it is coupling C++ object instance variable Right, this variable with OTCL object instance variable RTT. Right, so this is the binding. Right, uh, commands and methods. Right, for TCL object command instance procedure to access compiled methods. Right, and then if this doesn't exist, call uh, parent method. Right, so here is the code for the linkage header management so here we have constructor with bound variable right so here in this portion as you can see send method is invoked right and return it returned the result right so here uh, this is the network we have to simulate so of course th those are different nodes and those are different switches uh, maybe routers so those uh, are also nodes but with some special properties right so we need to connect them so when we connect them we will be actually creating a topology right and then uh, when we talk about those different computers so there are different applications right so different agents has to be attached right and this is a node because this can each uh, router uh, or maybe a switch is also a node regarding NS2 so we need to uh, create a link when we want to connect those different devices so here you can see we have agents so this is the node and we have two agents uh, and two apps applications and then uh, of course we need a link in order to connect those uh, devices right and for each node you can see we have a uh, node agent agent application and application okay so here is the 
class hierarchy again TCL object so this is the connector and a connector actually receive packets and transmit those packets to uh, target underscore and this is actually the basis for agents and links queues plus delays and then we have a classifier right so destination slot for packet right so it is actually classifying or looking for the destination slot for the packet and then uh, NS2 it support a lot of applications right so uh, X as a bridge which connects an application right so agent X as a bridge and uh, that agent is actually connecting an application and a low-level network based on the user demand provided by an application a sending agent constructs packets and transmits them to the to the receiving agent through a low-level network right so application TCP agents and we have start stop send receive right so example uh, this is the application telnet application it's a schedule uh, agent send message call based on exponential interarrival timer right so here we have to generate uh, attach traffic generator UDP agent right initialize next inter interval traffic right so schedule bursts of packets so the source is Pareto source will be generating here Pareto on off traffic right so here you can see we have the application that is attached to this TCP agent so the application FTP application will be transmitting data by using this TCP agent indicate user demand uh, applications traffic generator right confirm conform to a predefined schedule for example constant bitrate right so then we have simulated applications demand as if the application is running for example FTP right so here we have to conform to a predefined schedule and here we are assuming that the application is already running class application to main uh, protected functions so here we will be talking about the functions that are being provided by this uh, application class right so start and that is uh, command to start the application then stop and this is the command to stop the application right so whenever we have those functions they have to be overridden by the drive class right okay uh, we talk about the FTP need uh, uh, which is an application so it don't need any input file so tell the attached ag agent of the file size we just have to tell the file size and this is actually implemented in OTCL domain only application FTP so here you can see OTCL command and its meaning invoke start stop invoke stop agent return the name of the attached agent and here we have send n bytes so we have just men men have to mention the size attach agent to send out n bytes of data attach agent right the name of the agent connection between itself and agent so for FTP so here after applications we will be talking about agents so there are a lot of different agents that are being available in NS2 so an agent is actually an NS2 object that is responsible for creating and destroying packet so the ultimate goal of the agent is to create a packet and of course when the TTL is negative right or maybe zero so this packet has to be destroyed so this is being done by the agent so there are two main types of NS2 agents first is the routing agent and then we have uh, agents that are available at the transport layer so uh, TCP UDP stacks and we have timeout send ETC allocate and schedule packets right so call back to app underscore to notify of data and we have different uh, so this is the syntax all uh, right how we will be doing this stuff so agents for 
so whenever we are creating connections so here we have UDP set up UDP uh, new agent so we are declaring an agent that is a UDP agent right so this is the source and we have to define the sync so this is the sync right and now we have we are actually going to uh, attach this agent right to a particular node that is n0 is, is a no node and we are going to attach this agent to n n not right and then this is the source attached to n not and then sync is attached to n1 so if i have to uh, draw a picture over here right so what uh, i will be doing so we have a node here we have a node here right so here we will be actually having udp agent that is connected to this node and this is the source node and then we have this node that is the sync node so that's why we have a null agent right so this is we have attached a udp agent over here and this is the sync right so you can see this is the source and this is sync okay so here we will be talking about languages again but in more detail so actually ns2 is an otcl skipped interpreter with network simulation object libraries but this is not written in otcl but the core is actually written in c++ so we have to maintain the efficiency right so ns2 uh, exploits a split or a split programming model is used so if we talk about the simulation or the network modeling or simulation so we have two uh, very important factors first one is the control plane and the second one is the data plane right so uh, we want to target those different planes uh, differently right or you can say we want to isolate those different planes so that we will be having more control on each of uh, the plane control plane and data plane right so uh, the data path is implemented right by using our data plane is implemented by using c++ and the control part is implemented or handled by using uh, OTCL right moreover if we talk about the low level event processing and packet forwarding so this requires high performance right and uh, modified and um, the mo frequent frequent modifications are required in order to handle the low level processing and packet forwarding right so therefore uh, the event scheduling and the basic network networking components uh, they are in the they actually lie in the data path right and they uh, are implemented by using c++ and when we talk about the control so uh, we have to take uh, different configurations into account right and different characteristics of the network traffic right sources so we need frequent changes right and those different changes at the topological level at the uh, network level right uh, we need a very fast changeable uh, sort of environment so that is provided by OTCL so that's why we are using TCL because we can it's it's very fast to change and uh, it's very fast to code so that's why we are using uh, TCL in order to handle the control right so here uh, it's the same at, uh, okay so now comes the visualization tool right so that is called NAM network animator so if uh, you can see it's it's a very good looking tool and you can see that we have different uh,
buttons over here so here for example play animation and you can uh, here you can see you can also have uh, stop animation button and backward play zoom in zoom out right so this is the timer right so attractive force by layout model right so this is uh, you can see this combo box uh, we have layout right so here we have the iterations number of iterations for layout and here run uh, auto layout right so it change the step parameter right so we can change the step par parameter time between animation frames current animation time right and uh, we can also add and remove by using this tool but uh, there are certain limitations right so turn on NAM tracing in your TCL script so of course we have to mention in our TCL script uh, if we want to use this tool NS NAM trace and then this is the file orientation right so a node position for wireless duplex link uh, and here node 1 node 2 orientation uh, left orientation or right orientation and of course uh, finally we have to execute the nam this is the command in your tcl code exec nam file name so here are some of the advanced capabilities we can also have different colors different shapes and labels for different nodes for example color red and this is the shape hexagon label you can also label uh, a node accordingly and then these are the link options so you can see we can also use different colors for different links and a different orientation for different links right so uh, packet color right so annotation and control playback right so here is the user interface right so you can see that we have different nodes different packets are flowing between nodes right and you can also lab label differently we have we can also use different colors right create simple scenarios we can also create simple scenario by using NAM uh, good for those who don't want to learn TCL so if you don't want to code in TCL but we have limitations that's what I have mentioned this is the editor right so you can add your own stuff but within certain limits so let's talk about the uh, components that are being provided by NS2 so node is a compound object and it is composed of a node entry object and a classifier right so we have a classifier in order to uh, for traffic classification unicast node and multicast node right so we can have a node that can be a multicast uh, node or unif unicast so multicast classifier and here you can see we have the unicast an address classifier a port right so this is the unicast node so you can see different uh, components desk classifier this is the address classifier and this is the port classifier right a multicast node consists of a classifier that classifier multicast traffic unicast packets and a multicast classifier that performs uh, unicast routing right so here is the node classifier demultiplexer right so agents you can attach uh, agents to your node entity built from classifier distribute incoming data to agents distribute outgoing data to links right okay so here is the link compound object in ns2 uh, it's made up of subclass of ns object it's uh, user creates a duplex link two simplex objects delay object and ttl object and a null agent right so it's a uh, duplex link so we need a q object delay object right ttl object that is actually time to live uh, for a packet null object for the sync right output q uh, of a node is actually implemented as part of the simplex link right object uh, 
because we have only one way traffic in that case and then dequeued from the queue are passed to the delay object that simulates the link delay and packets dropped at a queue are sent to null agent and are freed there okay uh, then the, finally the uh, TTL object it frees uh, calculates the time to live parameter for each packet arrived right and if it's negative or zero so it will be packet will be destroyed so here we have links simple link super class link simulator uh, inst uh, instantiation of the procedure and here we have the duplex link n1 and 2 bandwidth delay and here these are the arguments right so in order to declare a link and then we can also uh, we have to mention the queue right so here we have red queue the type of the queue right so it's a full duplex link between n naught and one this is the bandwidth and this is the delay right and this is the queue drop tail right so duplex link two-way communication and then between n1 and n2 this is the bandwidth that is provided by this link and then this is the delay offered by this link and this is the queue mechanism supported by this link and then this is also very important and this is the fundamental or uh, you can say the unit uh, of data that has to be transmitted or generated when we talk about data communication from one point to another point or within the network from one node to another node so uh, it's composed of a stack of headers so you can see we have a lot of headers header and data so header is used for controlling and this is the actual data or payload of the packet common header we have a common header IP header TCP header RTP header and trace header right so if we talk about the common header U, UID unique ID P type packet type size uh, this is the size of the packet and this is the timestamp because whenever a packet arrived at a node it is being timestamped right if we, we are interested in the packet arrival time so uh, we will be conscious about the timestamp when the packet has arrived right and then this uh, the it, it also uh, is correlated with the delay of the link that is uh, created over here two millisecond right or maybe we are interested in the service time of a particular request right okay and uh, TCP header right so this is uh, we have a IP header for addressing RTP header right UDP uses RTP right and trace header is defined and the offset of each header in the stack is recorded all register header headers is created when a packet is allocated by an agent and a network object can access any header so any header can be accessed by the network agent accordingly has the header stack right uh, although a packet can carry actual data right by depending upon so we can uh, have a packet uh, with no data that is only being used for the signaling or control from base class event right so uh, the whenever uh, we talk about the simulation so NS2 is a, an event based tool so every trigger of uh, each packet will be triggered an event right so other drive class is AT event OTCL event so here we have the packets right so you can see we have these are different packet types and the headers okay a set uh, of headers plus data or uh, default is to include all headers of all types in pa packet 3 kb per packet right so we can if we don't want extra overheads so we can turn off unnecessary headers accordingly so here is the packet format header common header IP header TCP header and so, and so forth so here we have DS packet type ID size and I face right 
so how the packet will be flowing right so here you can see that we have the application a over here FTP and this is the uh, agent TCP agent right so this is the address classifier port classifier and then we have the link between n1 and n0 and we have the destination address as well as destination port right so so how things will be going on sends a packet to the entry of the node n0 right so this is the entry no of the node n0 right and then after that packet is sent to the head classifier right so packet is sent to the head classifier which is a uh, class of the destination hash classifier of node n0 right and then uh, after that the des des hash classifier object examines the header of the packet in this case the packet is sent to the node n1 that it forward the packet to the link head of the connecting simplex link right so this is the link head right so it's forward here link head forwards packet to the connecting queue object right and from here the queue object enqueues the packet not blocked it will be forwarded to the head of the line packet to the connecting link delay right and object and set it its status to blocked the link delay object uh, it actually initiate two events packet departure event and packet arrival event right the TTL checker right object receives the packet and it has to check the TTL field the TTL field of the packet is non positive the packet is state away destroyed dropped from the queue we forwarded packet to the entry of the node n1 right so if I go back so this until this this all has been done and now the packet is going to be sent to the entry of the node 1 this is the entry of the node 1 right node n1 forwards the packet to the head classifier right okay and the packet is uh, as it to itself the packet is forwarded to the D multiplexer to the uh, agent null right stored in the D multiplexer and now we have the link is involved over here and here we have the packet so a simple topology you can see that uh, this is node n1 we have attached an agent and we can attach an application and this is the link right so you can see we have head and q uh, q dq link ttl right and drop head this is the cube type of the queue right so this actually so we have uh, an event scheduler to drive the execution of the sim simulation or uh, to process the schedule simulation event NS makes use of the concept of discrete event scheduler each network object has an event scheduler right so every object has an event scheduler object issues an event it has also to handle the event later at scheduled time there are two different types of event schedulers real time and non real time schedulers right okay so here we have a very simple example so you can see we have a new simulator right and then this is the node we have uh, defined a node and not and one and then we have defined a duplex link two way link between node n1 and n2 this is the bandwidth delay and this is the queue mechanism right and here we are, are connecting right 
uh, connection and this is the application right that has to be attached so attach agent TCP right so FTP so this is the start time of the simulation and then this is the end time of the simulation right so and finally we have to run so here you can see what's going on so package will be flowing right so we have to run the simulation for right and now you can see so actually a two node this is a very simple network that is a two node network application and this is, this is the agent source agent right and then we have the sync agent over, over here that's why we'll have a null here right so TCP right and not and for n1 this is sync right so this is a sync node or we can also attach a null agent okay and uh, NS2 can handle addressing right two modes default and hierarchical right default 32 bit address right port one bit multicast default and specific right so we can handle addressing by using NS2 nodes are at automatically assigned address we can generate our own address then it also support routing sign weights default to one cost and not uh, right cost he supported type static routing then session and distance vector routing right and link state experimental right so here are the code for routing as you can see link right okay so because we have to route so we can also uh, apply different uh, mathematics by using NS2 uh, we can uh, generate or develop a, a specific router that is uh, actually creating or forwarding the traffic or routing the traffic on the basis of a uh, a certain algorithm maybe certain policy maybe certain set of rules then we can also generate or uh, develop a node or we can also develop a traffic generator that is actually generating a traffic by following a certain mathematical function for example we can uh, de design a traffic source that is generating exponential traffic we can also develop uh, a N traffic generator or source that is generating maybe uh, heavy tail uh, distribution based traffic or maybe Pareto based traffic or maybe on off traffic or maybe some other so uh, we can use uh, NS2 in order to develop and design certain protocols, certain topologies, certain nodes and certain mathematical traffic generated generating sources right tracing objects that are inserted between nodes uh, from OTCL using trace right and monitoring we can also monitor traffic record counters of interest for all packets right so here is the tracing CSDS, uh, previous hop, next hop, type, size, flag, right? So we can record accordingly. So here we have the wireless node. So wireless uh, traffic has to be handled differently as opposed to the wired network uh, traffic because we are conscious about a lot of different parameters. For example, we need power efficient routing. We uh, need uh, to focus on delay, jitter and packet loss right? and we are also uh, interested in designing and developing uh, routing algorithms special specifically for wireless uh, communication, wireless data communication. So here you can see that we have a different design for wireless node and this is the classifier right? and here we have the agent and here you can see that is something different 
link layer object, right? I have Q interface Q and Mac layer, and we have a physical interface because this is important. We can uh, exploit those layers, Mac and physical layer, in order to realize the wireless node accordingly, right? And here you can see we have the channel, right? You can also model the channel accordingly because channel is very important when we talk about the wireless communication. So here is the block diagram of a wireless node. So that's all for today's lecture and today we have talked about NS2 architecture and we discussed the goals, the objectives uh, of using NS2. Then we have also talked about the languages because we talked about that uh, there is uh, two main entities when we have to design, develop, analyze and evaluate a network. First is the control plane and the second one is the data plane. So we want to handle uh, those important entities differently. So we have handled data plane by using C++ and, uh, and this language is used in order to develop the core uh, of the NS2 or you can say the engine of NS2. Then we have to uh, handle the control, right? So whenever we talk about the control, so there are very frequent changes, configurations that are being required, right? Uh, in order to uh, evaluate or maybe analyze or design and develop uh, an infrastructure, right? So we have used OTCL in order to accommodate the control. And then there are different models that are being supported by NS2. We talked about uh, those different models then the components and then uh, what kind of research we can uh, conduct by using NS2 uh, if we, we are talking about uh, networking, right? So we have fixed networks, wireless networks, maybe uh, heterogeneous networks that includes wired and wireless both. And then the platform, that is very important. So we have uh, all the platforms th uh, that are being supported luckily nowadays. So we can use uh, the platform uh, which we uh, can work on more effectively and efficiently. Then after that we talked about the directly structure of the NS2, right? So in order to uh, analyze its uh, architecture, class hierarchy, and then uh, the split model, and there are different applications that are being supported by NS2, and agents uh, that are available in NS2, and we can also visualize uh, the outcome, right? And we can record uh, the post-processing uh, into a particular file and then we can run that file by using some tool that is NAM, Network Animator. Then different components, node, the links, and the packets. And these are very important uh, elements and components of the NS2. Then uh, it NS2 also support addressing and routing and we finally we talked about the wireless node and we have saw uh, we have seen that uh, uh, the wireless node is a bit different because we have Mac and uh, physical layer and then we have also channel in order to uh, analyze evaluate and design uh, the infrastructure for wireless network simulation. So that's all. Aaj ke liye itna hi kafi hai. Apna khayal rakhega. Meri taraf se Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum.